Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back, and we're gonna we're gonna apply the uh, that row number technique to our customer order data, and the the analogy here to real life is, you need to separate your customers out into different groups based upon the order number that they placed. So, in business, it's critical to measure acquisition and retention. So, how do you understand acquisition and retention? You have to think of it in terms of when did you acquire the customer and what was their subsequent activity, and everything kind of falls out from that. So <clears throat> recall last time we looked at um, we looked at the customer's minimum order and, and their ID, and then we counted, we counted the number of uh, results within that, within that query, with an outer query. Um, that's great, but let's use a more direct method now that we're familiar with row number. Um, so let's get the... Uh, the customer ID, uh, the payment date uh, from payment, and that looks good. Um, of course, we'll use our alias here to be proper. And we want to know, uh, is it their first order, their second order, their third order? What is it? So we're going to use our good friend row number over Partition by p dot payment date. Remember that ascending is the default daughter. Let's see if that works, and it does not work because we are not partitioning by p dot customer ID, and we do not have to order by anything because it's implicit. I'm making this up as I go along. Forgive me, um, but I think you'll see that the raw effort of putting this together is a lot more useful than some polished final product, I hope. Um, so let's do a sanity check. When the customer ID number changes, uh, so should the row number. And there we switch over to customer two, and the counting begins as the dates ascend. So we've done a good job so far of getting um, getting this data. And I also want to get the, uh, the amount Let's get the amount. Great. Well, I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit here just for clarity. Maybe it's easier to read. We're going to we're going to do a case statement. We're going to do some other cool stuff here. Um, so we have our base table here now. We're thinking about the data. What if I just wanted to break this out into two different states, right? So in order it can be uh, a first order or a repeat order, um, opt A or a repeat order. And the logic for determining that is if uh, row number equals one new, else uh, repeat. All right, so let's, uh, let's think about this. I'm gonna use a case statement. We saw that <clears throat> several videos ago and a case statement's job was to classify or, or name things uh, in a slightly different way. And recall that we use it for day of week um, and that was easy. Zero was a Sunday, one was a Monday, if I recall. So we're going to do something like that. And um, I think I'm going to just wrap this in an outer query. So I'm just going to do t dot star from t. Uh, I'll make sure I have my parentheses there. Just indent this a little bit, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to we're going to want to build a case statement around the row number. So we're not going to want the customer ID. We're not going to want the date yet, or maybe we do want the date. No, for now I just want to see uh, revenue from new purchases. No, I do want the date. I want to see the date, and I want to see revenue from first-time orders and repeat orders. So we want the uh, date. Rev for first time, rev for repeat. Okay, so what do we need here? Uh, we can ignore the customer ID. We're gonna need uh, t dot payment date. That's gonna be a date, and then we're gonna have a case date. So we're gonna say case when t dot row number equals one, uh, and I'll show you something really clever after this, but I'm just gonna hold off. 
uh, then uh, <clears throat> new buyer. And remember, we don't have to do the uh, case when t dot row number equals uh, greater than one. We could just do else uh, repeat buyer because that's the only other thing that can happen. We can say end as uh, order type. And we're going to want the sum of the revenue. So we call that amount. So we're going to want to do sum dot p amount. And I think this will work. It didn't work. We have to group by something here. So we're going to group by the date. And I think the case. Great. And our ordering is a little screwy, so we're going to order by one that's implicitly ascending. And very cool. So now with this, what appears to be somewhat convoluted, if you just at a glance look at it, but in reality, you know, it was, we started by writing uh, very simple inner queries and then wrote stuff on top of that query. It's like you start with a table and then as a sculptor, you keep massaging it and, and doing more things with it. So, you know, you can kind of see here for uh, this day, new buyers brought in 800 bucks, repeat buyers brought in 360 bucks, uh, you know, so on and so forth. So that's how you would start to do a kind of uh, new buyer versus uh, repeat buyer analysis. And this is what most businesses would do. Um, I think I'm going to pause it there and then we're going to take a different angle and we're going to combine the sum step with the case statement step. It's going to blow your mind, but it's another good pattern for you to learn. And it's very, it's very cool. Okay.